In today's video, I would like to talk about the JavaScript callback functions, which is a really important topic in JavaScript. But before we start, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell notification. Alright, so what is a callback function? In JavaScript, functions are objects at the same time. Since we can pass objects to functions as parameters, we can also pass and call functions inside other functions as well. Now here you see a callback example. The print function takes another function as a parameter and it has called inside of it. This is valid in JavaScript and named as callback. So a function that is passed to another function as a parameter is a callback function. Okay, now you are might saying, okay, I get it, but why do we need callback functions? Well, let's consider these three functions here. JavaScript runs code sequentially in a top to down order. So firstly, the task one function will be executed, then task two, and finally task three. However, there are some cases that a function or a task must run after another function runs, but not before it. And this may also not happening in a sequential order, and this is called asynchronous programming. So here, for example, let's assume that the task one makes an external request, and this means that it should wait for a response. And let's say task two must run after task one is completed execution, but not before that. So how is that possible? Let me show that shortly in a very simple example both task1 and task2 logging messages to the console. Now if I run this, the messages are printed in a sequential order. But what if task1 has a 2 seconds delay? By the way, there is a method in JavaScript called setTimeout, which calls a function or evaluates an expression after a given time in milliseconds, so 2000 milliseconds, is equal to two seconds. I am telling it just in case you don't know. So what if task one has a two seconds delay? Then JavaScript executes task two. Let me show that again. When I run this, we see immediately task two, but after a little time later, that's two seconds, we can see task one has printed to the console. Now, how can we prevent task two to run before task one finishes execution. You guessed it, right? We need to use a callback here. And now let's see how to create a callback function. To make sure you understand better, I will give two different examples and start with a much simpler one. Let's clean this up and write one single function. I define a constant message, a function here, and this will also log a message to the console. This message is shown after three seconds. Okay, so our function is ready. So here I call this setTimeout function again, pass our function message as the first parameter, and secondly, let's define 3000 milliseconds for a delay. Now, if I run this, we see that the message function is being called after 3 seconds have passed. In other words, this function is being called after something happened. In this example, it is 3 seconds needed to pass, but the function has not executed earlier. So we can say that this function is an example of a callback function. Alternatively, we can define this function directly inside here instead of calling it later. So let me copy this and delete this. Now, as we can see, the callback function here has no name and these kind of functions are called in JavaScript as anonymous functions. As a term, anonymous functions is also important to know. If you prefer, we can also write the same callback function as an arrow function. So let me clear this and turn into an arrow function, which is a simpler way of function definition. We can also define our callbacks as arrow functions. All right, now let's continue with the second example. JavaScript is an event-driven programming language, and we also use callback functions for event declarations. For example, let's say we want from users to click on a button. 
So let's create a button here. And give an ID. This time, we will see a message on the console only if the user clicks on the button. So let's clear this. So firstly, let's select our button with the document query selector from its ID. Next, we need to add an event listener. It also takes two parameters. It should be a click event and it takes a callback function. And here we define our log message. And let's say user has clicked on the button. Okay, we receive an error here. Don't mind this, let's fix it with the window object, with the window on mode function. All right, now the error is gone. And now when the user clicks on this button, we can see that the message is on the console. This is also another example of a callback function. Callback functions are also being used for event declarations in JavaScript and they are really helpful. So callbacks are highly used in JavaScript and I hope this video helps you to understand what they really do and how to work with callbacks easier. If you find this video helpful, please like and share it on social media and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.